Welcome to Street Rod 101. I'm Bob Hamilton. Hot rods in my life have been a passion with me ever since I had my first roadster ride when I was in the third grade. And since that time I've built lots of cars. I've gone through the muscle cars. I've gone through Tri-5s, the F-100s. But my first love has always been the older hot rods from 1924 all the way up through 1932. And I decided that because I, I enjoy building these cars so much and I've never had the money uh, to afford to have someone else build them that what I would do is I would learn as much as I possibly could on my own and by observing other people and taking classes or whatever the situation might have been where I could have uh, picked up some additional information. Uh, going to street rod runs, uh, car shows, hot rod magazines, etc. These things all give you good ideas. and. Uh, the purpose of this video is to basically help the individual who's building the car at home. This car was built entirely in my shop here. I did everything on the car and it's taken me a long time to learn how to do all the things that I do. But the, the idea here is that anybody can build a hot rod. And if you've got some patience, you've got some time, and you've got the interest and desire, then you can go ahead and you can build a car just like this. Or you can build something else. I understand that most people are not going to build this particular car and uh, again this, this isn't the purpose of this video. The purpose is to show you all the different areas and different things that you can do. Give you some ideas, help trigger some thought processes, uh, use what you can use, what you don't want, don't use, whatever. Combine some of the ideas that I have with things that you already know how to do. And as you go through and build a car, you need to think about what you're going to do and you want to look at the end product in your mind before you ever start building this car, this car or any other car. And this is a fiberglass 1928 Ford Roadster pickup. This is built for a friend of mine and at the very end of the video we'll go ahead and show you all the little details that we've incorporated within this car. But I just wanted to show you one of the interesting things that you don't see very often on a hot rod like this. This one has a third door. You don't see a third door on hot rods. I've never seen one. I'm sure that they have them, but in my experience, I haven't seen anything. As we get ready to start building this car, and you can see that it is a roadster pickup, it also has a handmade metal bed, and we'll show you how to build this, and show you how to build a lot of the different things that we have on this car uh, as we go along. One of the things that uh, you need to keep in mind is that you could take whatever we do here and modify it and do whatever might need to be done to incorporate your own particular uh, situation, your desires or, or uh, needs, for example. Another thing that you need to pay attention here is the fact that this car has also been lengthened. This has been lengthened about six inches. So with these two things in mind, then we need to go ahead and get started on the video. When we build this car, or when I build a car or any other car, the first thing I do is I go ahead and I make sure that the body is this, the length that I need to have it. I've got all the basic and the rough out work done on the body so that I can build a frame to fit it. A lot of guys will just buy a body and they can go off of plans and they can put their car together and it works out real nice. And there's not a thing wrong with that. But anytime you do any type of modifications to the body, or in this case, we built a bed, we built a 26 inch metal bed, so I need to have the bed built, I need to have the body lengthened, and I need to have everything basically set up on the car so that when I build the frame, then we can go ahead and fit it and it'll look really good. Another thing I might point out here is the fact that this, has, this is a high boy because the body's mounted on top of the frame, and if you'll notice the frame right here actually contours the body and you can't buy a frame that will do this so in the video we actually show you how to uh, contour the frame to fit the body. After we get the body uh, lengthened or modified in any way we have the bed made and we have the basic rough dimensions here then we can go ahead and start building the frame. After we start building the frame we get the side rails taken care of. The way I like to build a car is I build it from the back to the front. A lot of guys will go from the front to the back. A lot of guys will just take a set of plans and some measurements and build a car. Uh, it's whatever uh, happens to work the best for you. On this particular car, we started with the back. We went uh, from the rear end, the rear suspension. We moved forward with the body in place. 
as we came along we went ahead and we set up the engine transmission the front end got everything taken care of the frame on this car is built out of inch and a half by uh, three inch 188 wall thickness heavy wall tubing and it came out really good I like to use this particular type of tubing I also use inch and a half by four inch and a half by four heavy wall uh, 188 wall tubing is a little bit more difficult to uh, get a hold of in this part of the country but uh, either one of them will work a lot of guys will the standard a lot of guys use the two by three and there's nothing wrong with that I use the heavy wall tubing because it gives me a little more strength it reduces a little bit of the flex gives me a little bit more to weld with and it works out a lot better for my particular application so with these things in mind here giving you a little bit of sugar to uh, see what's going on here as far as the car let's go ahead and let's get started on the video We'll start by modifying the body, go to the bed, then we'll start with the frame and continue on. At the very end, we'll go ahead and we'll put it all together, show you how the whole car came out. This also has a fiberglass top. We're going to put this on in just a minute so you can see how the top uh, looks on the car. Uh, just before. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, take you on a little tour of this hot rod and kind of point out a few things that we've done to make this a little bit different, a little bit more unique. We'll start at the front end. It's a basically a, a typical 32 grill shell. It's fiberglass. It's been chopped only about one inch. It has a stainless steel uh, tubing for the grill. It's 3 8 diameter. And the way I did this, I just bought uh, two lengths of, of uh, the 3 8 tubing and then cut it to fit. And I show you how to do this in the video as we go along. Hand polished it, put it in. Another thing we've got on here is we've got some Frenched in turn signal lights on both sides. I've started doing this on some of my cars. My coupe has it and this one has it. The frame, as I mentioned earlier, is an inch and a half by three 188 wall thickness and the front horns are also handmade to resemble a Model A and they're made, they're made out of several pieces and then we have a spreader bar and then I've got little uh, pieces of steel welded on top, the whole thing's been chromed, and that mounts the license plate. You could mount it here, you could mount it up here if you had to, whatever your, your state requirements are. Everything is threaded, it has bungs inside here to uh, take care of that. I run a heavier pannered bar than most people. These are 7 8 OD pannered bars on both the front and the rear. On the spring perches, they pivot. It's actually a pivoting uh, spring perch, so when I set my caster, I can uh, lock it in and it'll still run with the axle. Uh, the axle and the frame and everything, the spring will line up and not have a bind on it. We have regular disc brakes on the front. Something new that I've tried on this car is I've got Teflon bushings. This is a product that's new on the market. So I'm trying them for the first time on this. So far indications are that it works really nice. What this does is it eliminates the bushings inside these areas here and uh, all the zerks so we don't have to worry about maintenance. The steering arms are handmade. We set those all up, made them a little bit longer so you get a little easier steering and that seems to have worked out quite nicely also on this project. As we move around to the headlights, uh, I've taken some conduit, some flex conduit here that you can purchase through a lot of the manufacturers. This is actually set up for the stock Model A, Model B type headlights. Made some aluminum uh, pieces that go into the frame and this slides in and we got one that goes over the front and the interesting thing about this is that if you unscrew this, this has a space right in this area and if you unscrew this it slides down and then it exposes the nut down here so so we can go ahead and we can actually adjust the the headlights. You can see the nut coming into focus. And if I continue to, to unscrew this, and I can put a three quarter inch wrench on here, I can tighten it, loosen it, adjust my headlights, whatever it needs to. Tighten it, when I get through, I just screw this back like this, and it looks pretty nice. Everything is contained. This is nice and flexible. Your wires run inside here. I've tried to keep as much of the wiring inside the frame as possible. As we look at the fan, it's an electric fan. I've gone to uh, running exclusively electric fans, uh, the high CFM fans, 3300 CFM fans. And the thing you want to consider and keep in mind whenever you mount one of these electric fans is you need to mount this thing so it's, it's not going to move around. If you just use these through the radiator uh, Ziploc 
uh, system right here. Eventually, if you're on any kind of rough road, it's just going to work itself loose, and then you're going to wind up having a problem right here between your fan and your crank or your water pump pulley. So on this one, I extended the mounts for the radiator up, drilled and tapped, and mounted them right here on both sides. So it has two uh, mounting points here, plus I've got the ones that go through the radiator that help keep it uh, next to the radiator. As we move back along the frame, we notice we have a Vega box. We have the stock type mounts. We have the tight tuck headers. We have a small block Chevy 350. And then we run up through. We're using a uh, steering column shift linkage. The radius rods, these are all handmade. We chrome these. We have an extensive number of uh, nuts and bolts on here that are chromed. The washers, a lot of the nuts. Everything is the, the least amount of of uh, grade on here is a grade 5. Everything is either a grade 5 or a grade 8. Around the steering boxes, those are all grade 8s. Around the steering mount or the uh, radius rod mounts, anything that has to do with suspension is a grade 8. They're, they're chromed and you need to be careful who you buy from. Make sure you get a good high quality. The firewall, when I got this body, actually had uh, like a 4 or 5 inch recess inside. And I've decided that took up too much space inside the compartment, so I cut that out, made a one-piece flat firewall. It uh, looks better, and when I set these up, I always set them up so I have about a hand width, half inch or so clearance between the uh, distributor and the firewall. You also notice something a little bit different on this Roadster. Uh, we have three different cables on here. We have the bottom one here, which is our kick down for our Turbo 350. We have our accelerator cable at this point, and this black one is actually a cruise control cable. So this car actually has cruise control installed on it, and it works real nice. The frame, as I mentioned earlier in the, uh, at the beginning of the video, is inch and a half by three 188 wall uh, tubing, and it's contoured to fit the bottom part of the body. As you'll notice as that goes around here, it actually fits quite nicely. The hinges are, are stock Roadster hinges, and as we move up to the top, we're running a chopped, a two-inch chopped windshield. We're running the, the wing, uh, wind wings from the uh, stock Model A on here. This is all aftermarket. Up at this point, I have built uh, two pieces to hold our top on and also acts as a, a support for the uh, outside mirrors, and I did this on both sides, then we had it chromed. And the way this works is when you have the top off, this back hole is used to mount the uh, windows or the uh, side mirrors. And then we put it down, the brackets that come down on the top, the latch, the pin that goes through and holds this goes in this hole. And there's another hole back here where you just put your mirrors in. To change tops it takes just a few minutes and it works, works real good. Sometimes we drive it with the roadster, or as a roadster with the top off, sometimes with the top on. With the top off, I've got wood going around on all three of the sides back here. They're connected with uh, stainless steel, poly stainless steel uh, bolts right here that are, are uh, countersunk. And as we look at the car, it has very, some very unique things. We open this door here, we open this door, and we notice that there's a third door, as we mentioned earlier. The roll bar is used to, is not, it's a non-functional roll bar, and you can see inside here we have, we have a, a brace right here, and that holds this from coming forward. And then this seat right here is unique because it slides forward. So I move this forward, so it's on tracks. We move the seat belts, which is a uh, three-point harness. The man that I built this for is actually uh, paralyzed. And then we have a, lat a latch down at this point, and this part of the seat slides out. So this is one of the unique characteristics of this vehicle. The car itself will actually support him. This way he weighs about 200 pounds. But what I did is I designed a little helper. I've got a wheel. Has adjustments, half inch adjustment holes. And so as we pull this out, 
and we slide this into position. We take a 3 8 bolt and we lock it like this. Then we can drop the wheel down and then we can find which hole uh, fits this the best. So now we have a support and so as we run this out we take less chance of pulling the, fire, the, the uh, floorboard up by the use of this wheel. The latch on here is nothing more than a standard type of a, uh, like a gate latch. It's just a piece of tubing with a bar. I put a little notch right here and it just slides up, slides back to release it, slides forward and down and that's what locks it. And this piece goes through a bracket on the back side. Now as this car comes, as the seat comes out, there's another bracket on the inside. We put this T-pin, lock it in there, and that keeps the car or the seat from going in and out. We'll pull that back out, and then we can go ahead and move this up to this point. We can take the wheel, pull this out, put this in the back or wherever we might want to put it, slide that in, line that up, lock it in place, and now the seat is secure. After the van is located or loaded inside here, we just slide him back like this, lock it in place, hook him up with the seat belts, close the doors, means that Kenny is handicapped, we have to have hand control since he doesn't have any uh, control over the lower half of his body. So we've got the hand controls to control the brake here and then the throttle at this point. And this is a standard hand control unit uh, you can pick up. I don't know what they cost or where you, where you get them. He had this one. He took it off another vehicle. And these are adjustable in and out, up and down. There's so many adjustments on here it's unbelievable. But the only thing it took to actually put this on the car was to build a different bracket to mount it down here on the, on the, uh, beneath the column. And then I changed the, the spacer between these two. It was a 3 8 spacer and I just made a 3 quarter inch spacer and moved it over. You notice we have the cruise control on the uh, steering column. And the other interesting thing is if you look over to the passenger side, you'll notice that I have dual brake pedals on here. So the dual brake pedals, as I push the pedal with the hand control, the one on the right side goes down also. There's also a standard brake pedal on the bottom right down here that allows a, a normal person to drive the car without the use of the hand controls. If you take the hand controls off, uh, if you're going to drive a long distance or if you were a big guy like myself, then you'd have to take this off to drive it and then you'd still have a brake uh, pedal down there to control it. The interesting thing about the way this is set up, and, it, it, and we go into this in the detail, is that both pedals are removable. So if Kenny decides to sell this car, we can take both pedals out, they just unbolt, and then build a, an extension on the driver's side and bring it back down, bring it up or however you want to put it, and it just bolts back onto the original brake pedal. So it's a kind of a dual purpose system. As we look at the, the, uh, the dash area, we notice that we've got a pocket here for his uh, cell phone or sunglasses. We have the dash and then all of the knobs on the dash in the middle are pull knobs. So uh, Kenny can't turn a key with his hand but he can, he can hook it and he can pull. So all of these knobs in here except for the heater can be pulled out. We've got the headlights that pull. We've got the uh, I'm sorry, we have the wiper motor here, we have the headlights and the high beam and low beam is right here, and then the ignition switch is right here. This is the heater and that's a fan on the other side for the engine. So by putting the uh, pull type switches on there, it eliminates any problems with him having to actually twist his hand or his wrist to start or turn something on or off. The way we control the the ignition itself is with a key on the master disconnect in, inside the bed. So when he gets home, his, uh, his wife will uh, turn the master disconnect off and then pull the key out of that and that keeps kids and, and other people away from uh, getting into trouble. 
On the other side of the dash, below in that panel, you'll notice the stereo is recessed. Uh, you don't see that very often, and we've had a lot of good comments on that. It's something simple, but it worked out pretty nice. It actually balances off the pocket on this side, and then you can barely see it, but I've got two cigarette lighters uh, sockets. I've got one here, and there's one on the other side, and those are used for a cell phone or any type of a small fan. Uh, when it gets hot, he could do that. The other thing is that this one, this car actually has a heater in it. The heater is located up underneath the dash. It's a real small compact heater and with the top on this car it really puts out a lot of heat and that will help keep his lower body warm enough to where he can drive it on cool evenings. He gets bundled up and he, since he doesn't have any control and uh, temperature monitors uh, per se, uh, the heater actually keeps the chill off of him and, and prevents him from getting sick or any problems. So this works out pretty nice as far as the inside. The dash looks good. It's made out of poplar. It's got lots of button heads. He's got the gauges that he selected on there and a little Ford emblem on the side to kind of accent it and balance it off. The uh, dash, like I said, is poplar along with the wood around the outside of the the back of the cab is also popular. We've shifted the camera so you can get a little better view of the heater. You can see that the heater is down in this area. It's a small compact unit as I mentioned. Here's a better view of the uh, cigarette lighter sockets. We have one on this side, one on the other. A little better view of the knobs as it comes across. Just kind of shows you a little bit more detail uh, as to how it goes. You can see how the throttle is connected to the or the hand control that controls the throttle is connected to the standard throttle which is just an aftermarket uh, throttle. So it looks pretty nice inside there. It's all functional. Everything comes out. There's no uh, need for a wrench on the back side of the dash. Everything comes out from the front and uh, it's all secured. It all fits real nice. It uh, actually came out pretty nice. As we look at the back of the hot rod here, the roadster, we have a handmade roll pan here. We have a little bead going around. 48 Ford tail lights. We have a recessed trenched license plate holder. And the interesting thing about this is that it, it's on a spring. It has a receiver hitch. And the receiver we can use to put a little uh, ball on here and, and tow a little trailer or we could put a receiver with a platform uh, to hold the wheelchair or if we wanted to we could just take the receiver out, bring that back down, we've got a nice flush license plate. This particular receiver is an aluminum one and came, came out of a boat shop. I really don't know where he got it, but it works out real nice there. The uh, tailgate is an aftermarket tailgate that can be purchased. Kenny wanted this one because it has uh, the Ford logo in here, the Ford emblem. It's got the recessed here. So we kind of did some things here to kind of uh, balance it off. The same with the side panels. These are all handmade. Put in with button screws and some welding cord around here. The hinges. Made new brackets for the hinges. Made some Delrin bushings to go inside. Had everything chrome. Put it together with button heads. And it is a functional tailgate, so when you open it up, then you've got a nice little tailgate. You can't sit on it, this is obvious. But it's got chains, got little covers on it. We've got the battery, the fuel tank. But if you're at a, uh, at a uh, rod meet or a rod run or something, and, and we've got some junk on here, but, but you, could, uh, put, you could put something down here. You could put your lunch on here. You could put your drinks on here or whatever. And this right here kind of makes a nice little addition. It's got a tarp on it. Tarp is a little bit unique because it fastens on the inside with snaps along the bar on each end and on the side it attaches with Velcro. So as we put the this back up, this actually has acorn nuts that go on it. it. This isn't a quick release system. It takes about two minutes to take it apart, but it looks real nice here. The other thing you might want to look at here, we, we mentioned this extensively in the video, is the fact that the coils, instead of just being suspended by one bolt, are actually in a cup or a pocket that's welded to the rear end for safety. Uh, I've seen uh, one example in my uh, several years of where the bolt actually broke and the coil went down. And so because Kenny is handicapped, I decided to, that if this were going to happen, we wanted to uh, make it as safe as possible. So we actually built a cup around here, and we show that in the video when we do the suspension. The bed, as I mentioned earlier, is handmade. It's 
got the bead around here. It actually duplicates almost exactly a stock Model A bed. Let me show you how to build this, this bed in the video also. The car has a power antenna. Power antenna comes up right here. And when you turn the stereo on, if you're in the uh, AM or FM mood, or mode, I'm sorry, the uh, antenna comes up. When you turn it into the MP3 mode, then the antenna goes back down, which is kind of nice. Here you can see the, the back of the, the car. It has the, the poplar. It's attached with stainless steel 5 16 uh, coarse thread uh, screws, countersunk screws. And it's got the chrome hinges on the back and the bushings right here are the same bushings that we use on the on the front shackles in the front so if these wear out we just it's just an aftermarket thing you can pick up now the the fiberglass top won't fit on here with the with the wood in place so we just take a, a power electric screwdriver and we just take these off just takes a couple minutes and then put the screws back inside the body and then we can go ahead and put the fiberglass top on and then we have the completed car so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to take these off. We'll take the wood off, and then we'll put the top on, kind of give you an overview of what that looks like, show you how it opens and closes, and get a picture of the whole car. Okay, here we have the uh, top back on the car, and you can see the mirrors are in place. It's real simple to raise it up, and then it actually stays up by itself. The mirrors go with it. When we, do, when we have the top off, the mirrors go onto this bracket. We bring it back down. Fits nice and neat. And then we secure it with these two pins. We have one on each side. These will be chromed. And they just slide in. And then this little hairpin, hitch pin, just pops right up and locks it in place. So it's, it's actually locked in place like this from the inside works real simple so if you need to take the top off you just pull these pins pull the two pins on the back lift it off change the mirrors put the wood on if you want and you're in business you can see here we've got the uh, stainless steel 5 16 bolts put back in place so they kind of dress it up around the the area it does stay up by itself and it works out real nice the windshield wiper actually clamps right on here and runs down. There's a wire comes down and I've got a, a little trailer plug that it just plugs into. But uh, we only put that on there for inspection and if, if we're going on a trip or something we'll put it inside the, the uh, bed and if we need to put it on it actually fits underneath the top and uh, we can just hook it up. But uh, most practical purposes we don't even run a windshield wiper uh, because it's nice weather around here most of the time. So you can see by looking at the car, it's got a nice profile, has a nice opening. The third door clears, clears real nice. Put the third door back in place, close the regular door, adjust the mirrors when you get inside, however you need to have it. We can adjust the wind wings and it looks pretty nice. It's padded, it's comforted. It's got some insulation inside here with the padding and that'll help keep the, uh, the ultraviolets and uh, the heat off of Kenny in the summertime. It'll also help to hold the heat from that little heater in the uh, wintertime. We're going to build a, actually we've got a, a cabinet shop that's going to build a wood trim around here that will match the wood. He's so far backed up right now that, uh, we, didn't get that we didn't get a chance to get that on there, but that will finish that off at that point. So you can see the car looks pretty nice. It's a pretty detailed car. It's got a lot of interesting things. It's technically a handicapped hot rod. And that's what we're calling it is a handicapped hot rod. It's uh, unique for Kenny. And it's uh, a type of a car here that he can enjoy, his family can enjoy, and he can have a, a lot of fun with this car. On this side, we've got the uh, expansion tank or the uh, overflow tank mounted on a bracket that comes off the radiator. We actually show this in the video also. But this is just a little recap. We have the heater hoses that come off. Got a couple of nice polished aluminum clamps. The interesting thing about this is that underneath the motor mount we have the heater hoses that go through here and then we have another clamp that goes uh, right through this point. So the heater hoses going along the frame are actually encapsulated or encompassed with the bracket here and a bracket here. And so the only two brackets that are aftermarket and kind of dress it off and hold it in place 
are right in this area. Everything is kind of just kind of blends together, molds together, works out real nice. Here's a nice shot with the top in place. The car is basically complete at this point because it has a top. I prefer the Roadster itself without the top, but uh, Kenny, the owner of the car, wanted a top on. So we went in. This is fiberglass, and you know you can notice it fits real nice at this point. The doors do open and close real nice. It clears. So we're pretty much completed up to up to here. Uh, let's go ahead and let's see how we built this car. Okay, here's a nice little 32 daily driver, a little five window coupe. This is an all original, all metal body. Uh, this particular car came out of a river bank in Southern California and it had been rolled down. The top was all caved in and everything. And this car actually belongs to my son-in-law, Bernie, and he and I uh, spent a couple years rebuilding it and getting it back together. And Bernie had never built a car before, and so we decided to go with uh, an aftermarket frame and some aftermarket parts, but we did a lot of body work on the car. We did a lot of body work on the doors. We put a metal top in it. Uh, he helped uh, w all the time. He was up here. He was uh, not around all the time. That's why it took so long. But he got right in. He got dirty. He was interested in it, and the car came out pretty nice. The engine's a 330 horse uh, Vortex, it's a crate motor, and because he lives in Nevada, he decided to go ahead and put air conditioning in, so the car has air conditioning, heater, it has uh, the big bug eye headlights on the front, uh, aluminum radiator, electric fan, all of the uh, uh, things that you'd need in a hot area has disc brakes on the front, has a Chevy 10 bolt rear end, and as we get into the interior you'll find out that uh, we've done little things inside that make it actually uh, turn out to be pretty nice. One of the things we did is we put door solenoids in, and so we have the door solenoids that open and close the door real nice, and you can see the car is actually painted Corvette red, and it, it looks really nice out in the sun. It's not a perfect car, but it's a daily driver. Uh, we finished the car oh, about six months ago and he's got almost 3,000 miles on it already so it is a driver and it handles good on the road on the highway uh, 70 75 no problem whatsoever and uh, he's just tickled to death with the car okay with the door open here you can see that uh, we've done the panels we couldn't buy the original uh, metal frame so these are fiberglass and we did a little bit of work on these and these worked out pretty good the uh, upholstery is all leather. We had it done by an upholstery shop in Vegas. And this right here is just what he wanted. It's got the pockets down below. It's got the pleats, kind of reminiscent of the old uh, hot rod days of 32s. It's got power windows in. And as we go to the inside, we'll notice that we've got the power window switches mounted on the kick panels. Both sides are controlled by this one over here, then we have one on the uh, passenger side. Has an aftermarket tilt column. We wanted the gauges kept pretty clean, or the dash kept pretty clean, so we decided to go ahead and put the switches up above and in the overhead console. We'll show you that in a second. We did something interesting with the speakers on each side. We've, we hand did some fiberglass uh, panels in here and mounted the speakers so that they, the sound actually comes out this way. And then we also have a pair of larger speakers in back of the seat. Works out real nice. The bench seat is an aftermarket seat and it fit in there uh, quite nicely. It was a bolt in. So it has all the different positions. The car is not perfect by any means, but when you consider the fact that it came out of a, a river bank and had been rolled down down to get to the bottom of the river bank, um, we've done quite a bit of work here. The car actually came out and when we we didn't have any reference points in it, and when we put the windshield frame in, it was only about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch out of square. So we actually did a pretty good job. And all the things that we did here on this car here, uh, anybody can do at home if you have a little time and a little patience. As we go inside, uh, we used an aftermark aftermarket fiberglass uh, filler piece above the windshield, but then we cut it out and made some modifications. We had to make it a little bit larger. We cut out for the windshield wiper motor right here. 
we feathered that all in, blended it in. And then we built a box, a fiberglass box, mounted it to the cross members up on top with some metal brackets. It has wood bows going across, which were stock. And we mounted the box. And then inside the box, we have the stereo, we have the key switch, and then we have pull switches all the way across. And the two switches on the far end are actually ignition switches. And we just use the solenoid part to activate the doors for both the passengers and the drivers. The other two switches on this side control the headlights and the wipers. With a little creativity, you come up with lots of things. Bernie decided that with everything up on top and not on the dash, and this wouldn't be as cluttered. Okay, the rear of the car, you can see that we've done the traditional treatment here. We've got the 39 tail lights. We have a, a Frenched and recessed uh, license plate holder. And the back also has an electric uh, solenoid that operates the trunk. I've already popped it here. And the thing I want to point out with uh, any electric uh, trunks or doors is that you need to make sure that you've got a manual release on it in case you've got a problem with the solenoid. You've got a manual release. So you need to pay attention to that. As we raise the trunk, you'll notice that the trunk props are basically a takeoff from the 40s cars. It holds it up. You've got to have something to hold them up. You can get gas cylinders, you can make a rod, you can do whatever. But this is basically a uh, 40s uh, system that was used on uh, a lot of different models of cars. The inside of the trunk is upholstered, so it's finished. It looks real good. If we look at the bottom underneath, you can see the 10 bolt rear end, you can see the, the uh, coilovers, and you can also see the megaphones, which give it a nice deep throaty roar along with the uh, mufflers we've got on there. The thing you need to be concerned about is if you, when you build your exhaust system, if you run it to the outside of the car, then you're not going to get the resonance inside the cab. With these back about 18 to 20 inches, at different RPM and different speeds inside, when, when you're driving inside, you can hear this resonance. A lot of people it bothers, uh, some people it doesn't. So if it doesn't bother you, uh, don't worry about it. But that's something to keep in mind. This car itself is, is, is a, a nice car. It's a trophy winner. It's been in two major shows here in the, in the state and has uh, trophied. It has won a first place trophy and also a third place trophy. So this type of a car being built at home is built for fun. And Bernie and I built this car so we could have fun. We're not afraid of chips. We're not afraid of scratches. My coupe is the same way. Uh, we don't worry about them. Uh, cars that are trailered, trailer queens are nice if you have lots of money and if you like to just show them inside or if you like to show them outside but you don't like to drive them. Uh, a lot of people trailer the car just because they don't like to clean them up all the time. But these cars are driven daily and we drive them, we clean them, uh, we drive them in rain, we drive them in, in all kinds of bad weather and that's part of the fun of, of being a hot rodder and a street rodder. So what I'm trying to say here is that anybody can build a car. Anybody can build a nice car and the purpose should be to have fun with them. And we have fun with these cars and there's a lot of fun in building the car and there's a lot of fun in driving the car. And This car here is my own personal car. It's a 1928 Ford Model A Coupe. It's uh, channeled over the frame and runs a 350 Chevy and a 350 Turbo. The concepts that I used to build this car are the same that are shown in the videos with this 1928 Ford Roadster pickup. And this car right here runs down the road 70, 75, 80 miles an hour without any problems. So if you take your time when you're building your car, the frame, suspension, uh, body mount, etc., everything that you do to your car, you can have a nice running car. Thanks for watching the video and I hope that you've gotten some good ideas out of here and maybe we've solved some problems and given you some inspiration to complete your next projects. With the things that we've talked about here, I hope that, that you can enjoy street rod building as much as I do and I hope you enjoy street rodding and hot rodding as much as I do also.